<laughs> IT speaks out on the Cleveland Cavaliers' struggles, and he said when adversity hits, we go our separate ways. For a guy who's been in very few adverse situations with this group, he seems to be pretty opinionated. Your thoughts, Randy Urban, on the amount of thoughts Isaiah Thomas has chosen to share I, with teammates, media. He's, he's I, a broadcaster now. I actually don't understand why you have a problem with one of the key scoring players on your team to, just because it's his first year there that he can't want, stand up and say, look, we have problems. These are them. Isaiah Thomas was second in the league in scoring at 29 points per game. He was the number two fourth quarter scorer last, last year next to Russell Westbrook. I think he comes with some level of credibility to be able to say, look, we're not getting it done. Okay, you want me to defend like my perspective? Here's the defense of my perspective. Sure, those are great accolades that Isaiah Thomas is coming with in a situation in Boston where the team was it revolved around him as a situation to let him get no, no, off offensively. Were... But wait, let me tell you something. Tell this guy something. comes in to the Cavaliers. First thing he does, questions Kevin Love, a guy who's been there through the thick and thin. And one time out, we time out. He's, he one, said in that he's won a championship. And he's calling Kevin Love out in team meetings. Kevin Love won a championship with the team. Now he's calling out the coach and the in-game adjustments. This coach has won a championship with this team. Isaiah Thomas getting a lot of his opinions, opinions and perspectives on things publicly, and I think as a new guy in the situation, it's a bit much. Dan, you know, I, I think it's quite refreshing. Two guys won the championship there, and one of them doesn't play for them anymore. He got traded for him. okay? LeBron has everything to do with what's going on there. I don't care if they had Kevin Love or not. They, Man, you guys dissed Kevin it, it, Love. It was all about LeBron. Now, Isaiah Thomas is in that situation. He's speaking out. Yeah, they, they need someone Somebody's probably say who is kind of a little from the outside to help out whatever whatever's going on in there. What they're they're at a 333 win percentage in the last couple of weeks. They need all the help they can get. And if somebody's talking out, if it's Isaiah Thomas who himself admittedly is not playing well at all, but the injury issues are part of that. Oh, I have no problem with him speaking out. If he if was asked just, a question by the media. Defensive liability aside, this is a guy that lays it out on the floor. It's not hey, like he's not going to back it up. If you're, if you're going to point things out and have an issue with the way you're playing, keep it in-house. Thank you. That you keep, you, you keep. You think they haven't been doing you that? Keep for the past you keep it in the locker room. You don't. You don't say, "Oh, we did." But you don't say, Cavalier. "You don't say no. we did this in Basketball we did this in Boston." Brad Stevens did this. Oh. That's calling out the coach. That's calling out your teammates. Man, you know, and you want them to you have your back. Everyone Merch. on that team has their own agenda right now, and somebody has to come out and say it. How is this, this not IT's agenda though? You're saying everyone's got an agenda. One guy putting himself above the rest of the group and going to the media every time something's wrong. How is that not someone's agenda? asked a question. He gave his honest thoughts on the answer. And he Finally, did it, somebody hopefully, speaks. so his team would get better. I think that was his motivation. Is critical. Okay, I think because because we call out a lot of guys for saying this, for, for going out there against their team, and oh, now right. you're saying, well, oh, you it's okay for Isaiah to do you it. Call me a hypocrite. I'm saying right it's now? a little hypocritical. That's all, I I, that's all I said. That's all I said. Hey, like it, it it got said. It was probably we're probably looking at that particular quote, quote out of context. But and somebody he, had to say something. They are sliding fast. Who cares if he said, hey, Kevin Love, where were you? <laughs> Big deal. Why are you even questioning Kevin Love? Okay, let's not harp on this. Okay, let's move on. Why not? Here's Harping the question. Um, what's more likely, the Cavaliers winning a championship or LeBron James exiting stage left? Ooh. Exiting stage left. Yeah. Like, he said, I'm in it for the long haul. What's, how long is that haul? Well, he said it right, at, he, right afterwards. He answered that. He said, I'm here for the rest of the season. Mm, I'm focused on the. Haul. I'm here for the, the long haul. haul. I'm focused on the rest of the season. Yeah, so then don't weird, like right? don't say you're in it for the long haul when you've got what 15, 25 games left. It might be a long 25 he, games. He caught, I think he caught himself there when he right. said because he said long haul first. He's like, you know what? And I was <laughs> like, like, hold like, on a second. Hold like on a second. You, I'm back. Let me rewind that. I'm no, not like, sure I, that I'm back. I don't think he's back next year. And then they're not getting past the Warriors in the finals. So. We've been talking about this for so long, right? That guy is out of there. He's out of Cleveland. I'm not he so came sore back. That, but... He did his thing. He won the championship for them. He wants to go to LA or maybe Houston or who knows where it is. That guy Antonio. is gone. Cleveland can't say anything about it. July 1st, gone. Okay, let's I... move on because this is a big game hunting segment. That's okay, Randy. <laughs> You're good. You've had 14 and a <laughs> half hours You've got so hours much to today. say, Randy. It's not like, you, it's like you weren't on TV for three hours earlier. <laughs> I don't get to talk with you. All you, you do is talk about basketball. Okay, here goes, here goes. Um, the other team involved in tonight's game was, of course, the Minnesota Timberwolves, who have been playing great despite losing tonight. My question for you, Dan Gladman, is this team... Dan just spoke. <laughs> <laughs> 
Just kidding. <laughs> well, we'll go to Randy I'm on kidding. this one. I'm kidding. I don't even know the question. Go to Dad. <laughs> then I can no, think about my can answer. Can I just say, I, my brother's name Randy, and that was that's how we talked. <laughs> All right, I'll let that slide. Um, my question is, is this team, Tim, uh, this Timberwolves team, playoff ready? Randy. Dan. You go Damn. first, because then I'll think Megan. about my answer. Yes. Somebody. <laughs> Start Please. with Megan. You go uh, no, I, I think they are, and I think the more that Tibbs can, you know, let the leash go and play other guys on his team and not play Cat, Wiggins, and Butler, and you know, 4,900 minutes per game, I think it's going to be a little bit easier. But, I mean, you give up 140 points to the Cavs in overtime. That says a lot about – a defensive team that Tom Thibodeau is probably ripping up things and tossing, you know, going Bobby Knight in the locker room right now. But at at the same time, though, like, I think the more that they're battle-tested against teams like Cleveland, like Boston, like the Warriors, it sets them up to battle in the West. Do they get out of the West? Probably not. I think think what happened with the Timberwolves is, like, their their hierarchy was more outlined this year. I think Jimmy Butler, when he came in, he kind of just was, you know, um, you do it, Andrew, or you do it, Kat, but now it's it's solidified that Jimmy Butler's the main guy. Uh, Wiggins and, and Kat are taking five less shots, and I think they're fine with that right now because they're winning. <laughs> and, and it I, better be. Yeah, and I think that this team... But I don't think it was ever Wiggins. What? Wiggins never liked being the guy. He's always... Sure, he's probably he's fine. Like but I think Kat... Numbers, I think Kat didn't want probably wants a few more touches. What are you talking about? Seriously. Where are they Great right question, now? Dan. Are they fourth? They're four or five, right? Fourth. So... Not only is it possible that they might play Oklahoma City in the first round, Mm -hmm. but they're looking at Golden State Houston in the second round. I never said they They were getting out of the West. They have a 50-50 of winning the first round and no chance in the second. Are they playoff ready? Yeah, they're going to make the playoffs, and that's great for Minnesota and for the franchise. But are they ready to make noise in the playoffs? No chance. That wasn't the question, though. I mean, uh, kind of. I'll give, well, I'll then, give him a buy on that one. Oh, come you, on. You, you, you I heard you back earlier. No, Dan, that's not the question, Dan. You gotta tell me how the they're going to do it. All right, guys, hold on. Right? I never said they're going to make it. Stop it now. Randy, playoffs. stop talking for one minute. All right. Let's fight you. <laughs> we'll be back with fight more Randy face. after the commercial break. Make sure you follow him on Twitter. But look at this. Woo! Randy doesn't think this is a good dunk. Randy was unimpressed. Please defend your opinion. Oh, that's it. You can't. Done that on the back foot rim. Hey, out. 